Hello, hello, this is Carl at Tech, and today we're going to go over the payment processor implementation of the coding project. Um, so this is basically an implementation of what we did in chapter one. Um, I got a request to, to kind of go over the code um, in, a, in a video and just kind of go line by line. And I also got a request to do it outdoors. And so kind of two birds with one stone. Anyway, let's dive in. So um, the coding project is uh, the implementation of a payment processor using an account model is like 121 lines of code, pretty short. Um, and that includes some sample transactions and generating accounts um, and all that so let's let's get started um, now we're gonna start out just go over the structure of how this code um, works when it's run so first what we're gonna do is we're going to create a state object and we're gonna say it's equal to our initial state so remember state and state transitions this is how we're going to organize all of our code and you know uh, uh, as much as possible make keep it as simple as possible then what we're gonna do is we're just going to run some test transactions um, where this we have a for loop we go from the signed transaction length remember these signed transactions are just stuff that I generated up here um, they're like mint uh, some coins send some coins send some more coins <laughs> it's super duper simple stuff um, and then we are going to uh, just log the state at different times and so if you you look at the actual output um, you'll see that at state t at state zero we've you know minted a hundred coins then we've sent 65 coins and then we send a few more coins send 10 more coins um, so so that's about it um, now how does how does this work well uh, we created a couple accounts this is just some identities. These identities are comprised of a public key, a private key, and an address. So the address is just the hash of the public key. And so then we have these unsigned transactions. They just specify a type. In our implementation, we have a type mint and we also have a type send. Um, the only one who can mint transactions are, of course, the payment processor because they can do anything. Um, and then we've got a from address and a to address and amount. And announce for replay protection so um, then we have this uh, array of signed transactions these signed transactions are the unsigned transaction contents plus a signature of that of the hash of the unsigned transaction content so if you notice right we're saying get transaction hash we're saying unsigned transaction zero unsigned transaction one unsigned transaction two so the uh, first the payment processor is signing using their private key this hash and second the payment processor is signing the uh, the second tr unsigned transactions hash and lastly Alice is going to sign um, because first you know the payment processor mint some money then send some money and then Alice sends some of her money so those are our signed transactions and what we're doing right now is we're just saying okay here's our state object and let's apply the transactions each signed transaction we're just going one by one applying the transaction and then at the end we're going to you know apply some invalid transactions to make sure that our code checks for the common errors so let's actually look at what the output is so first at, at time zero we're going to have applied our first transaction which just mints a bunch of coins for the payment processor and that will give the balance 100 and we'll have have the nonce one um, then at time one we're going to have a send transaction which is sending uh, 65 of those coins to this new address um, now remember that nonce is going to be zero because we just created the address there's been no transactions applied um, remember if you want to know more about nonces check out the replay protection video um, for why that's important um, and then remember our nonce is going to be two because we will have incremented it right so this was the first tr uh, the first transaction was not zero which then now the nonce is equal to one in our state and then the we sent another transaction using this address and so we had to increment the nonce yet again and so now the nonce is two um, then at our last state slice what we're doing is we are saying okay now Alice is going to send 10 of these coins to uh, Jing and so that's now a new address that we've created and this nonce zero and Alice's nonce one and we're good and then we just catch a couple errors and so the first error that we're catching is we can look at it here is we are trying to sign with an invalid private key so essentially what happens is if you notice unsigned transaction 2 is actually in a transaction saying that Alice is sending to Jing but 
in this case, Jing is signing the message with her private key. And so that is absolutely unacceptable. We can't let that go through. And so we reject it. And that's why we say, okay, tried the invalid signature transaction. Oh, we caught the error. Great. Um, then we are going to try replaying a transaction. And so we just take one of our signed transactions and try applying it again to the state object. And we see that that fails yet again. So success, we've, we've kind of covered the bases. Um, but we haven't looked at apply transaction. This is our key function. Remember, everything is state and state transition. So the, really the magic is happening when we take our transaction, which is properly formatted, and we provide it as input to our state transition function, and we provide our state to that object as well. So here's our apply transaction function. It takes in a state object and a transaction, and it's going to apply that. So let's look at how that works. Well, first, we're saying check the front address matches the signature. So this is something that we didn't cover in our hashes and signatures video, but sometimes these signing messages actually includes a recover function. And this recover function recovers the address from which the signature was created. So, so in other words, this signer variable contains the actual address address. And so what we'll then do is we'll just say, okay, now that we have the address, let's compare it to the transactions from field and make sure that, that equals those equal each other. And if they don't, then it's an invalid signature and we throw an error an error. So now if we've gotten past there, that means that we are now in, you know, we have the right signature. So that's great. Um, now we're just going to do a little bit of kind of upkeep. Um, we're creating a record for the address if we haven't already uh, created one. So a record in the state object. So remember, when you send to a, an address that has never received any money before, it's actually going to create more, uh, it's going to like bloat the state a little bit. Um, so the more addresses you create, the more state objects we're, we're having to hold on to. And this is actually why creating an address in, for instance, Ethereum costs more gas than maybe updating the contents of an address. Um, so we're creating a state object, we're creating a, a record in our state with a balance zero and nonce zero, very simple. And then we're going to say, okay, let's check that the nonce is correct for replay protection. Um, this means that the from, right, the contents uh, nonce, we have to make sure that the nonce from the from address in our state object equals the nonce in the transaction. This is what provides us replay protection. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to have our first transaction type, which is minting coins, and we're going to say, okay, let's mint coins if the, transac the transaction type is mint, and the from address is the payment processor's address. So this is just kind of special to our implementation. In, of course, public blockchains, there is no special address that is able to mint coins. Instead, miners mint coins at a particular schedule quite often. Um, then we're going to say, okay, if the address is, uh, or if the transaction is type send, then we're going to simply check that the send address, that the address that's sending the money has enough money to send, right? It's more than zero. This, and if it isn't, right, we're going to throw an error. Um, and then we're just going to update our state object. And we're going to subtract from the balance of our from and add to the balance of our to. And then we're going to increment our nonce, right? Just plus one. And we'll return the state. Now, note that that is the entire state transition function. Um, this is really, really simple. I mean, we're just, all we're doing is decrementing balances and incrementing balances in reality. Um, now, this can get more complicated when you're, you know, doing something like Ethereum where you allow for any arbitrary code execution and you're, you know, using gas, but it actually doesn't get hugely more complicated. Well, anyway. Um, Something to note is that in this implementation, the apply transaction function is actually not a pure function. So in kind of like good functional programming patterns, we wouldn't actually mutate any external state during the execution of this uh, function. However, I'm actually passing in, instead of a state object, I'm actually passing in a pointer, a reference to the state object, and I'm mutating that reference of this to the state object, and I'm returning the reference. So I'm really, like just, it's important to note that Within this, it is not a pure function, but ideally speaking, it, it, it would be. Um, so 
once again, just like a really quick review, we you know start out with our initial state, we apply a bunch of transactions, we then try some fake transactions and make sure that these checks that we just went over in our apply transaction function worked, and we, you know, poop out a, a new state and a state that has all the correct state transitions in it. And this covers all of the, you know, many of the different things that we were talking about in our lectures, talking about hashes. Remember, we're able to do the, um, you know, this this uh, this get uh, get transaction hash is going to re re return a unique number for each transa unsigned transaction. So because of second pre-image resistance, we can't kind of swap in a different transaction and get the same hash. So we can like attack someone by signing something and then swapping it in. Right. This is one of the properties we get. Another thing we get is of course the you know signing in general. We understand how that stuff works. We also understand state and state transitions with our apply transaction function we understand how replay protection works and we also understand that this central operator could do basically anything they want um, so that's basically it um, hopefully that was helpful and I'm going to quickly go over the UTXO implementation um, in our next video so until next time y'all